this computer. Share screen. Here's Joaquin. Yay. Um, here we go. Okay, well, welcome everybody to today's Data Science Education Webinar. I see a few of you are joining us right now. That's wonderful. This webinar is being made available through the Concord Consortium, a nonprofit educational technology laboratory based in Concord, Massachusetts, and California. You can learn more on our website, concord.org forward slash meetup. Today's facilitator is Joaquin Engel, who will be talking about the project ProCivicStat. Joaquin will lead a discussion about what's involved, and he's also going to share some lessons learned. ProCivicStat is a strategic partnership project involving six universities in five European countries, including Israel, to advance young people's ability to understand quantitative evidence about key social phenomena that permeate civic life. Joaquin is here zooming in from Germany, which is just a miracle to me that he's here uh, with us on Zoom, and he will be sharing more information about that. A recorded version of this webinar will be made available on YouTube. We'll email you details about it through Eventbrite after the event. And if you're comfortable sharing your name and face, please turn on your web camera during the webinar event so that we can see you. Um, Joaquin will also share with you that the format of this webinar is participatory by design. Uh, Bill and I will be facilitating the live questions that you have, and I'll be the text-based questions on Zoom chat or <laughs> find me on Google Docs, etc. For those of you just joining us, welcome to our webinar. Our speaker today is Joaquin Engel, who will be speaking about a specific pro-civic set. Joaquin, I'll let you take it from here. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much for this introduction, and I feel very pleased and honored to be part of your webinar series. And I still consider it a miracle that <laughs> we, we can um, have that seminar while sitting around the globe in, I mean, quite opposite places. As you may have already picked up um, from my accent, I'm truly from Germany. And let me first give you some pictures, some ideas where I'm from. Here you see the center of, of Europe, Germany in the middle, <coughs> focusing on Germany. You see in the southern part, the city of Stuttgart, and right north of Stuttgart, 10 miles north, 15 kilometers, is the city of Ludwigsburg. That's where I am. And Ludwigsburg is a city with three different castles and a wonderful marketplace. It's like a Zocalo in Mexico and the University of Education. That's where they have to endure me in my and everything else that I do. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, just to get you started and to get our cooperation started um, in, in a reasonable way, um, let, let's let check a couple of, of things like housekeeping and um, and, and uh, if you look in the upper right, you see in URL, this is our landing page. And I would recommend you to, um, to copy it and bookmark it and, and go there in a tab. Then you, you, you get that page that, oh, copy. Um, no. This is then what it looks like. And it, it, it has all the links that I will be re referring to in my, in my talk. Yeah. Um, maybe I give you a minute and give me a sign um, if, uh, when you, you succeeded in, um, in, in getting a, opening a tab with that address. Um, for me, it's the first time working with Google Documents and the first time doing a webinar like that. So I hope very much that technology, I mean, I, I, admiring, I admire the technology and I, I hope technology will not let me down. I have next to me my, my co-worker and PhD student, Achim Schiller. And in case I faint or I get um, panic because of technology, then Achim will take over. 
So he, he's my backup here. Um, have you all found, uh, were you all able to, to open um, that particular page? And if, if you are muted, then just raise your hands. Then at least for, I see some, some, cases of some of you. And in some other cases, I just see a ceiling. Hello. We got some new incoming listeners. Lathas, hello. Okay. So again, my, um, my, who, no, how do I do that? Why? Okay. Um, let me go back to, to my, not my first slide, but one of my first slides to, just to, wor to work around uh, that we have a basis how we can communicate with each other. No one wants to listen to a talk for almost two hours on the internet. And in particular, not to someone with, with an accent. So uh, I will try to make this webinar as participatory as possible. And I also hope that technology will work here. Um, we will be working quite a bit with code up. We are not many participants, therefore I can ask you, did, have all of you worked with code up or do we have people who say, I, I, I never worked with that environment. Code up is a, um, a software environment, um, an education based, um, um, software environment for data analysis. And it's a lot similar to Fathom that has been around for many years now, for almost 20 years. And um, to handle code up is very similar to handling um, Fathom, but code up has several additional advantages over <laughs> Okay, um, and, and, and sure, it, and it has a few ca capacities, um, or Fathom has a, a couple of capacities that CodeUp does not have yet. Okay, um, if you are new to, to um, CodeUp, you could, let me have a very short run with you, you could uh, push, uh, uh, click on that link, and this is a, when you get code up started, and we click here on getting started with code up, and it gives you some some hints, like how do you get data into code up? Here we have a comma separated file, and you just drag and drop it, and it's there. And this is a file about um, animals and how much they sleep and how long they live and a lot of further information. And you may want to make a graph. You just click on the graph um, icon and then you take some of these variables. Let's say, um, let's say sleep and you drop it on the one axis and you take lifespan and you drop it on the other axis and we have a scatter plot. Each dot corresponds to one animal like this one here that um, lives very long and sleeps little and here we have an animal that uh, has a short life and spends most of its life sleeping. Okay, um, we, we will come back and I, later I will uh, have you do some work with, with Fathom, but for, for now let's come back to, um, to our slide. Let me 
arrange a few things here. Uh, okay. And uh, I go on. No, no, I don't get that. Okay, doesn't matter. Yeah. Huh? Not mine. Read again. Ah. Sorry. Here. Yeah, I know it's possible. Okay. Okay. Oh. Ah, yeah, okay. No more. No more. Okay, uh -huh. here we go. Uh, it, it, okay, it doesn't matter. So, sorry for that. Okay, all right. Um, so, let me get started with my topic. These are the best of all times for informed active citizenship. Digital media and ac accessibility of data are changing our access to information and shaping the political discourse. We are now finally able to, to have evidence-based decision-making because the information is out there. Data are everywhere and almost everyone has access to the data. Software for visualizing complex multivariate data are all around. There is an explosion of social media, and this is fueling new and unanticipated directions in e-democracy and e-participation. This opens new pathways to engage citizens in democracy and civil society. Wonderful. No, I have to tell you, these are the worst of all times. <laughs> We have a growing disdain for factual knowledge. A proliferation <clears throat> of fake news in social media. Post-truth has been elected the word of the year by the Oxford Dictionary in 2017. People, if they don't like the evidence they talk about and make alternative facts. And worse of all of that, I mean, we have all this data and all these tools to visualize data tools that are designed to help us understand this data, but citizens lack the capacity to make sense of all this data. So, okay. Before I go on, and let's have a first start with a, our participatory mode, I'd like you to to, to give me some responses to the question. I mean, this webinar is about statistics about society, and, and I will, we will talk about what is different uh, for the, with the statistics that inform about burning issues uh, that affect all of us, um, and um, what are the specifics about statistics about society. Is it any different from any other statistics? And this is a um, data science webinar. Does it have to do anything with data science? So um, write down in this box, and I think the way you can do it is, oh, someone already started writing something in here. I, I'm going to the, uh, I left the presentation mode, and I give you a few minutes to, just to add your, your thoughts.
Okay, you are getting many ideas and, um, and I imagine I, we could go on and you could, um, you could write all, uh, uh, whole essays. And, um, let me look at what you, you wrote and, and add a few comments uh, from my um, side of you. But by the way, I mean, when I say the seminar is participatory, uh, that um, goes beyond that at a couple of, of instances, I asked you to, to write something down. You can also raise your voice and ask questions, make comments, and um, you can use the chat window um, to, to make remarks. Um, Achim here, if I overlook that because I'm my mind is busy with, with talking and having these slides. Achim will, will help me and uh, remind me that there were comments you made. So fe feel free to, to, to talk and to, to add and, and comment. <coughs> and um, le let me see what you wrote. It likely draws on data from large number of people and focuses on their interactions and behavior rather than about the physical world. Okay, that's true. I mean, it's, it's data and, and we may have large number of data. It gives us a connection where maybe some traditional methods of statistics fail and we have to look more towards methods of data science. I think that data science education will help people better being able to make use of social data and to understand when it's being misused. Okay, yeah, the misuse and, and we also have to be critical about data yeah? and, and to, to assess the credibility um, um, of data, but for, first of all, uh, data are becoming available and to rely in our um, decision processes on data and, and <coughs> that sense empirical evidence, um, I think as we are all convinced, it's a better way to make good decisions than, um, than, than superstition or ideology or um, or, or wishful thinking. Yeah? Uh, I think data education is important yeah, to make well-informed decisions. Okay, good to give students about issues in the wider world. Very important topic. Yeah? It may educate people, students, about the world around them. Um, and so th this is an, a very important ingredient to, to educate people students around uh, about the about the situation in i mean in, in other countries in other places in, in other walks of life um and um and it may also motivate them to to experience that statistics and data science can be something useful Okay, great, because people can look at data about their own lives. Yes, they can compare themselves and to, to look at their situation and, and think about um, the situation and in, inform themselves about uh, the living conditions of people who live at some 
of a place. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, you ask what's different about uh, social data compared mm -hmm. to data. And I was just thinking, since social data is so much about people, mm -hmm. I wonder if one thing we could generalize to say is that the, the definitions of the variables and the meanings of the values are much fuzzier or tend to be much fuzzier mm -hmm. and, um, with uh, data from physics, for example, but yeah. in kinds of data. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, definitely a very important point, yeah? Um, and when we get to the analysis of data, you will see how um, difficult it is to, to, to define variables, to, oper to, 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 um, to measure variables, and to, to operationalize, to, 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 to say clearly what, what these variables, what you want them to measure, yeah? like corruption index in a country, democracy score or what it, it, but with much easier concepts and it starts with unemployment yeah? risk of poverty yeah? um, that's very difficult to to define and and to measure and um, okay all right very very nice and let me let, let me move on and Achim, where do I have to click? I have to click here, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, yes. Your comments are now eternally on my slides. Well, not eternally. You can erase them, but we can study them afterwards again. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, gross if it's the, oh, what's the, the plan for my webinar? Yeah. And, um, and um, I'm part of a European uh, cooperation of six universities, a cooperative project with six teams. Uh, we are calling ourselves Pro-Civic Stat, and I, I will give you some introductory information about Pro-Civic Stat and about civic statistics. Civic statistics is what we, <laughs> the name for, uh, for that, what we, um, what we study. Yeah? And then I'd like you to do some data exploration for yourself. And I prepared two different examples and after you, you explored them um, and they, with the help of CODAP, uh, we will have some exchange of ideas. And after that, we will, uh, I, I will give you some more details about civic statistics and, um, and uh, the challenges, the knowledge base, the demands. Um, and I would not be surprised if, if, um, if this would be, um, would fill all the, t the time that we have. But, um, but uh, I prepared um, an, a third example that will introduce a, a particular tool, a modern tool that introduces some more methodology that is specific to, to data science, namely regression trees. So some of you may have participated in the wonderful webinar by Tim Erickson, and at least Tim has, he's uh, among us, and Talia and, and Bill have and Dan may have, um, and he introduced classification trees and the regression tree is kind of a continuation. In case, and let me say that right at the beginning, in case we do not get here there yet, and you are still um, curious about it, you, you, along the slides, you, you may explore it yourself. And at the end, and I will not miss that, um, I, I will give you more information about Prosifix that, and in particular, I will inform you about resources that, um, that, that have been made available through our project. Okay, so what is Prosifix that about? It's a project focusing on promoting civic engagement via exploration of evidence uh, and on related challenges for statistics education. 
Um, it's a three-year project. We are close to our end, or at least the formal end of funding. And as it happens, I mean, towards the end, you still have a lot of ideas that you didn't think of in the beginning. And we, <laughs> we may continue doing something uh, beyond August um, 2018, but um, in, in, in August we have a, a final conference in Berlin and this will be the end of our funding. And involved are teams from the University of Durham in England, from Haifa in Israel, and Ido Gall is here with us today, from Ludwigsburg, that's where Achim and myself and Laura Martignon are from, from. Then from the University of Paderborn, from Porto in Portugal, and from Zeged in Hungary. Okay, and um, sure, I will um, uh, refer you to our website at the end again, but here you see our, so the website. And the website is still in the process of being built up, and in, at the end of July, it, it, um, it should be finished. Well, it has to be finished because, as I said, our project then comes to an end. Okay, so wh what are our ideas? What is it, what is pro-civic all about? Knowledge and skills to reason adequately with data are an important prerequisite for the functioning of democracy in modern societies. For example, in a society that aims to keep, keep up with promises of equity and fairness to all, questions on the extent to which so, uh, particular groups in society, women, minorities, uh, elderly, people with disabilities, and so on, are disadvantaged, um, uh, or access to education or to the public services um, are limited to particular groups. All of that has to be judged on a quantitative level. And this requires access to evidence and to statistical knowledge. Nowadays, government organizations have gathered a wealth of information that anyone can use for information and debate. From the United Nations, work on sustainable development goals, to measure social progress through national statistics offices, uh, gather information on employment, income and migration to non-government organizations, which monitor climate change and citizens' health. Data and quantitative information provided um, on, on burning societal issues are distinct and different from the statistics that's normally taught in introductory statistics courses. Technology now provides powerful tools for data visualization that offer the potential for citizens to explore um, rich information sources for themselves. But what is lacking is the capacity to make sense of all this data. Okay. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I, um, okay. Um, <clears throat> the challenge of ProCivic Stat is to enable learners to understand and analyze, critically evaluate civic statistics, what we call civic statistics. Data based on messages and statistics about issues and trends that affect all of society <clears throat> and to empower citizens to understand evidence on data about key issues to, and to engage in debates and social policy. <clears throat> Civic statistics, as we understand it, is an interdisciplinary um, thing. Yeah? It's at, at the crossroad of, of many disciplines. Sure, it has a lot to do with statistics, and, um, and it focuses in particular on, on particular areas of statistics. Yeah? Not, not each part of statistics is equally relevant for civic statistics, and there are distinct um, 
fields of statistics that may not be taught in, in ordinary introductory classes, but are very important for, for understanding statistics about society. Numeracy, of course, is important because we are often dealing with large numbers. And, um, but the large numbers have to be assessed in, in perspective. Yeah? Um, um, a, a budget of a particular country has to be related to the number of people living there, to give you a simple example. Um, civic statistics has, of course, a lot to do with civics and with social science. Um, as the, 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 the content area or um, where um, the, um, the issues are, let's say, where, where background knowledge is, is important. And because the major goal of civic statistics is to empower people to, to understand the data about society, um, civic statistics has a educational mission to help people understand data about the world around them and to enable them to, to, to um, get engaged um, and to be well informed and to be engaged in, um, in, in, in public affairs. And, and finally, it's also a matter of, and not finally, but, but it's also a matter of good pedagogy. I mean, um, you, if you are statistics educators, and most of, of you, uh, for most of you may this be true, if not for all, um, you, you, you know about the modern approaches of statistics education, yeah? working with real data, being problem oriented, um, um, focusing on concepts and not on, on, on technical formalities, and, and, and do, using real data. Yeah? And uh, all of that is embraced as good pedagogy also by, um, by, by civic statistics. Civic statistics is based on a critical evaluation and reflection, and it is essential, an essential remedy um, for exposing false claims in fake news. Okay, so um, here you see a couple of of areas that we, um, we relate, that we think um, civic statistics is related to migration, demographic change, pollution, health, poverty, racism, crime, equity, human rights, education. <clears throat> but the problem as we perceive it, despite the importance, civic statistics are hardly addressed in a systematic way in regular introductory statistics courses. Not at the high school, nor at the college level. At high school level, teacher, teachers stay within their comfort zone and the math teacher um, doesn't, uh, or the, very few math teachers are trained to teach statistics. And in particular, they are not um, to teach statistics in a field that um, involves so deep knowledge and expertise also in, in, in other areas of, um, um, of life. And, um, and the social science and civics teachers, um, they, they usually don't dare to, to touch anything with statistics. And you, you may be familiar with the um, with the guidelines for assessment and instruction in statistics education as released um, by the American Statistical Association. And uh, we, we study and we embrace and welcome their recommendations, but we found that civic statistics is not, not even emphasized in their recent recommendations. Okay, so, um, we um, um, studied um, civic statistics and uh, uh, tried to figure out uh, what is specific uh, about data about society. And 
um, we in, in ProCivicStat, we identified six general characteristics with many implications for curriculum and planning, for curriculum planning and instruction that characterize um, statistics data about society. Some of it you already mentioned in, in your introductory activity. Statistics about society are multivariate. We have a whole network of variables that are connected and related in a, in a complicated way. <coughs> there are many interactions um, and, um, and the relationship oftentimes is not linear. So the, the data are a lot more complicated than many data we encounter in, in the natural science. Yeah? And in particular, we have a lot of variables um, that, I mean, where we may discover some kind of a relation between them or an association, but, but oftentimes, um, confounders, third and fourth variable will, will, will solve um, a, an initial, uh, will resolve an initial um, connection that we, we may have found in the beginning, yeah? and that, uh, where we may have thought that explains how variables are related to each other. I mean, we all know for the human desire to identify causal uh, relations between, between variables and at the same time in the field of, of, of data about society, it's, it's very difficult to establish um, well-founded um, causal relations between variables. And another characteristic is that civic statistics data are oftentimes aggregated. They come in groupings, they come as indicators. Unemployment rate, poverty rate, um, and um, many, many variables uh, are reported as, um, as, as measurements, uh, as, they are not um, reported as single measurements, but, but are somehow an aggregation of, of, of uh, and made up of something. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you, the, the United Nations has something like a human development index to measure the well-being of people in different countries, and they don't want to rely only on, on economic indicators like the GDP per person, but what, what is the human development index? Yeah? And how can you measure it? Data in social science are oftentimes dynamic. They change over time. Um, <clears throat> if they are collected on periodic basis, each month, each quarter, each year, or on a comparative basis yeah, in multiple countries, they may be measured somewhat differently. Oh, oftentimes they are measured quite differently. It's almost, yeah. yeah. Uh, just a comment. Uh, I just understood one of the characteristics of, of social data is that we almost never get access to the, to the microdata. You've, you've pointed that out in the aggregate uh, yeah. case there. And how we deal with aggregate data is, is uh, it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's, sure. I mean, um, can we uh, validate the, the credibility of the aggregate data? Yeah? Let's say you get data about the human development index in the world, and you, you wonder, you would say, well, maybe I would have um, um, weighted different ingredients differently than the United Nations for some reason has decided to do it. Yeah? And um, it, oftentimes the data are, or most of the data are aggregated data. I mean, and I can um, guide you later to that to, and we, we can give you also access to, to some micro data. And uh, that allow you, I mean, to, to com may maybe to, to de define and design your own index. Yeah? Okay. 
um, let, let me move on and let me get you to some some uh, activities for yourself. Yeah. Other characteristics are um, um, information about like, statistical information about society. Oftentimes, is given to us through diverse and rich texts. Look at a press release from a statistics uh, national statistics office or from the United Nations. Yeah? Um, and we found that it's not easy at all to make sense and understand these texts. Then um, we, we find data represented in, in a multitude of different visualizations. I mean, this is, of course, due to the fact that the data are complicated, they are multivariate, and um, yeah, we, we, we are not claiming that everyone now has to understand high-powered technical um, uh, methods of statistical multivariate analysis, but people have uh, to, to uh, be introduced to understanding multivariate phenomena. Okay, and um, the social context is important. You cannot look at the data just in isolation. Yeah? Civic statistics involve issues of importance to society at large or to large subgroups of it. Um, the interpretation requires attention to the broader world. One cannot understand, let's say, statistics about migration into Europe, just to, to name a, um, a, 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 an important topic of these days without being aware of the phenomena of migration and its social implications. Okay, so um, I talked more than I planned and it's time for you to go on and, and do something yourself. And what you see here, don't start reading it, it's just the, um, the front of a, uh, of a page that we pass out to our students. And um, just recently, the UN released the World Happiness Report of 2017. And, um, and uh, here you even have a link where you can study, if you are in, not now, where you can study the report in detail and, and where you can address issues that we, we just, I mean, touched, like um, how, how are things being measured here? And, um, and, but let me, let me go to, uh, let me get started with the data analysis early on. First, I show you a few static slides with Fathom and with the data set, with CODAP. <laughs> and, um, and then we, um, uh, then, then I will let you do certain things. This, this is the data set, and I will explain let make a few comments about the variable soon. Here you see a scatter plot um, of the happiness is being um, named here the life ladder. People were being asked, rate your, your happiness on a scale from one to 10. So 10 is the most, and or I think zero is the least. And a couple of other things were being measured, like social support. How can you measure social support? Maybe I should ask you first before I give you an answer. You, you can imagine you are making a survey and you would like to figure out um, um, the social support that person you are interviewing um, believes to have. Well, you would ask, if you are in big trouble, is there someone you can turn to and you feel confident that that person would help you? Yes or no? Okay, Th that's how they did it. And also with a number of other variables. And of course, here you... Um, 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 uh, I, I don't even explain these um, 
scatter plots, but we start with the data. And if you click here, then a code up document should open. Let's keep the fingers crossed. Yes, it works. So it, what does it have here? It has the data set. You may wonder, 1,420 cases. There are not 1,420 1, countries in the world. Well, we have countries and years. We have data from year 2008 to 2016. And we have the countries here. We have the continent. Here we have, here you see the formal definition when you hover over the variable name, you will see how the variable, I mean, a short description of how the variable has been defined. Huh? Ah. Here. Please imagine a ladder with steps numbered from one at the bottom to 10 at the top. The top of the ladder represents best possible life. Oh, I have to read faster, yeah? Um, for you, and the bottom represents the worst possible life. How would you rate, where would you stand on this ladder? And so on. And, um, okay, let's open a graph. You click here on graph, and uh, we take the variable life ladder and drop it to the one side to the vertical axis and um, okay yeah you can study that and can say well there's a, a large range yeah? some poor people in a poor country they rate themselves very low let's see if we can figure out where that is oh yeah it's in Syria in 2013 and in some, if you click here, you find the happiest people in Denmark. Okay, so what makes them so happy in Denmark? Now I understand why my PhD student wants to move up close to the Danish border. Um, when he, but first he has to finish his work here. <laughs> um, okay. And you could take another variable and drop it. Um, um, yeah, you can, let's say, now we have the social support. You drop it on the horizontal axis and you get a scatter plot. And there are many more things you can do with that, with the software code up. And I'm sure we have uh, many experts. I, I have to add on a personal note you you i mean some of you may wonder uh, how i came i got to the privilege of presenting here and working with code up presenting code up uh, i had the uh, the privilege of spending 5 months with the code up development team in emeryville next to 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 berkeley and san francisco in 2016 and I learned a lot about code up, but I know that the people uh, working there are still a lot more knowledgeable because since I left Emeryville, I was basically an autodidact. Everything I learned from them, I taught myself. So um, uh, um, there are many more things you could do and I, I will stop here and I'll just let you do a few things. I, I asked a couple of questions um, and let me, I could add that as a text for you to, to, um, to uh, but you can explore whatever you want to, but let me give you some time to do some exploration yourself. Green, yeah two variables. I mean, you don't have to study uh, the relationship with, with, with happiness, but you may also study is there a relationship between 
I mean, okay, um, for wealth and social support, or um, for freedom that they experience, yeah? You may wonder, what is freedom? Freedom, are you satisfied or dissatisfied with your freedom to choose what you do with your life? Okay, even in a, in a free country, some people uh, feel, feel forced, <laughs> for maybe for psychological reasons, to do things they don't want to do. Okay, so. So I thought, uh, let me prove that money can't buy happiness. Yeah, good. But it wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why did I point at that too? Yeah. <laughs> to look at our score. Yeah, so I just focused on the most recent data. Yeah. Like, you, a cool way to do that is to track the variable year to the left, and then we have highlighted only the data from 2016. And these are the data, so I have life, ladder, and social support. Okay, you, you studied the money issue. Okay. And, well, you see, I mean, and be aware that, um, that the money scale is logarithmic, otherwise, it, the data would be very much spread out and okay I shall give you a few more minutes to to do whatever you want to do um, maybe someone wants to figure out on which continent the happiest people live I can tell you for Maybe a surprise. Uh -huh. It's interesting, the things you would hope would make people happier don't necessarily. Of course, it's not really making people happy, it's correlation with Right. If, if, if you want to explore other variables um, and just hover over the variable name and it will tell you how it is defined. Corruption, generosity. I mean, you have to be aware all these data are country averages. They are not micro data, country averages. I like that they give the uh, question, the sample question. Should I? Okay, you, you can. I, I have them on my slides, but I don't have them here. On. Oh, they are. They're in the uh, comment about the attribute. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. And can I ask, do we have anyone who is working with Coda for the first time? And I also want you to have a, a positive experience and, um, and um, give you some guidance. And so um, you, you can ask whatever you want to. And if I can't give you an answer, I'm sure Bill and Talia and Tim <laughs> definitely <clears throat> will, will give you the answer. Um, corruption has an interesting pattern. I would have thought it would be more 
okay. uh, related. <laughs> I agree. It's yeah. Surprising. It, it, it's very scattered, yeah? Uh -huh. Well, I used all of the data. Um, and let me see, what, 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 how is it? You're just on 2016, right? Okay. Okay, people are just being asked yes or no if corruption is um, <coughs> how much prevalent, mm. widespread, yeah, within business or not. And one, one isn't yes, yeah? And say, who, who is this country? Ah, we would have to uh, get, okay. Uh, let, let me give you a few, three more minutes to explore something and um, sure if you have questions or um, important discoveries that you urge to share right now, then Well, it's encouraging that positive affect is positively correlated with life ladder and negative affect is negatively correlated. Yeah, but but still, it's it's not that that strong. Well, I don't know how strong we should expect it to be. Yeah. Okay. So, you probably, if you, yeah. if you stop sharing your screen for a moment, uh, oh. you're I'll yeah, share. Uh, what do I do here? Okay. And uh, I think it will go to everybody. Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. So I just made four graphs that, and I chose things that had some correlation so that I mm -hmm. could scan them. I thought that was a nice way to see it. And I only focused on the 2016 data, because I don't really know what to make of the data when it's over many years. Mm -hmm. And I use this uh, set aside feature mm -hmm. in Codap to uh, set aside all the other years. Oh, how, how do you do that? In the table, if you have something selected, you can uh, set it aside. Okay. Or, and no, this is new. So the fact that you didn't know it before, <laughs> is yeah, you been informed. Until so a, a recent improvement. Yes. Very good. Okay. So I'll stop. Okay. All right. Um, let me see. How do I get Achim? <laughs> oh, do, do we have 16 here? Wann? Hier drücke ich drauf? Und jetzt drücke ich hier drauf, ja? Okay. Um, okay, who else wants to share something? A very nice data set. How did you acquire this one, uh, Joachim? Joachim, mean, where did we get it from? From the internet. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um... the homepage. In, in fact, I mean, as you realize, these are the 2016 data. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I heard on the news that the 2017 World Happiness Report by the United Nations had been released, and guess in which country it had been released? <laughs> Denmark. In the Vatican. <laughs> but not by the Pope. 
Well, I, I don't know why these UN folks went to, to the Vatican. Um, but, but there are 2017 data all around. And if you click on my link to the World Happiness Report, I'm sure you will find how to get the data. And in, in fact, I mean, you, you have the data now from, from me. But to, to explore the data even further, sure, it would be worthwhile um, um, looking, looking at the report and figuring out more details. I mean, um, what do you think about the validity of this data? A any opinions? Well, one thing I wonder about is because the uh, dependent variable, the life ladder, is a self-report, are there cultural differences from one country to another that might bias people to have to say that they are happier or more miserable or something like that? Yeah. Sure. And I, I think we may have questions to a lot of the variables here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I, I haven't looked it up. I mean, another question is, what, what about the sample size and the selection? Mm -hmm. yes. um, I mean, let's say, if they, if they had asked the Germans after the soccer game on Saturday night, they may have gotten a much better result than if they had asked them a week earlier. <laughs> also, you think happiness, higher happiness is better? <laughs> there's, there's that question as well. Okay. And of course, we poor Swedes would have been. That's why the Swedes are so depressed. <laughs> it's all because of football. <laughs> So I, I, I'm glad that we are discussing these issues of how the variables are defined and how they are measured and that maybe more, um, m m m more revealing here at the moment than um, to, to apply some more technical things uh, that you could do with the software to, 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 to find out whatever you would like to find out. Yeah? Like one question is, of course, these data are highly multivariate. Yeah. There's so many different variables and you, you may wonder, yeah, the happiness, we figured out it has to do with wealth, but, but it has to do with a lot of other things and these other things may be correlated with each other. Yeah. And we may want to have some representation that is is there a way to, to represent three or four variables in one graph? Okay, the answer is yes, it's, it, it's, it's, it's possible. Yeah? Um, and and did, did one of you try to find out which continent has the happiest people? Did, but then I lost the graph. Let me see if I can pull it up again. Yeah. And that may also um, um, refer to Tim's question about um, the culture. Here you see, a, a, have I shared my screen? Do you see yes. my screen? Yes. Oh, here, do you see which continent has the happiest people? It's not a continent. Okay. <laughs> it's just a number of islanders. It includes a continent. Okay. But may, may, maybe the South Sea is still the last paradise on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> this proves it. Well, not for long. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Can, can we move on? Sure. How are we doing on time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's let's move on. Yeah. I mean, okay. Here and if if you like these activities, I mean, feel free to to play around with it. Um, you can even do that after the webinar. Yeah. You don't need me. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, we ah, we did, we discussed a couple of these things already um, and. Um, um, sure, you could. I could ask you to to add comments, or but, but or let's just open um, for for discussion. And do you have more comments about which variables seem most important to go along with happiness? How did you figure it out? How certain are you? What else would you like to know? Oh, yeah. Bill oh, oh. is typing something. Okay, then we... Um, 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 and I'll give you a moment to reflect. But you can also add things orally. Okay. Sure. You think you could figure that out, Bill? I think which I function? has an increasing happiness and which a decreasing happiness index? I think I could, yeah. Yeah. And, and... I think and I could even compute it as a... I think I could compute the slope of the least squares lines. Yeah, of course. Assuming that the relation is linear. <laughs> And with this, this data, you, you can, it also could be interesting to investigate the relationship between other variables. Not, not only the, the happiness ladder, you know, is social support related to freedom, to, um, and to, to, to whatever else you, you may um, see here. Okay. You are curious about the relationship with the Gini index. Okay, and in general, how much variability in the Gini index? That's a good question. Or in, um, well, um, in, 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 in that scanner plot, Gini index and, and happiness. All right, so if you make that, like many others, it's not a clear relationship. Okay, uh, there's still something else to come. Let's wait for that. Okay, yeah. How do we make use of these data to bring about positive change in, in the world? Right. 
I'm curious how religion, leisure time, proximity to relatives. Wow, yeah, I mean, um, okay. I mean, I gave you a link to, to the 200 page report, but don't assume that I have read this report. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sure, I mean, it, I mean that, in, in, that makes social science so difficult. That um, variables are so difficult to to measure. We have a valid measure, yeah? and what you mean with. Um, I mean, how can you measure religion? No? How often uh, you go to church, or how would how would you measure that? Yeah? You can give a self-rated evaluation. No? Do you consider yourself a religious or a spiritual person on a scale from one to ten? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But this also is is, is highly um, cultural. Have you used these data with students yet? Yeah, yeah. And what did you find? Is it any different than what, uh, what you're finding with us? I'm turning to Achim. We, we have been teaching now in the third uh, semester in a row, we are teaching seminars on these issues with these data. And um, did they find out something else? beyond what we saw, not, not really. No. no. So then here is a, another question. Yeah. Uh, at a gathering over the weekend, I had the opportunity to speak with somebody who does a bunch of data science. And when faced with this data set, I bet he would say, oh, you know, the first thing that you need to do because it's data science is reduce the dimensionality because there are so many columns. And so I would, he said, he said, I would do a principal components analysis <laughs> first in order to simplify things. Sure. At which point I thought, oh, crime any sakes, really? But what, if we're trying to do data science education and we are faced with people who have bigger tools, um, is it, those of you who know more, is it actually a good idea to do principal components analysis or is my skepticism well founded? And if it is a good idea to use higher powered tools in order to understand data like these, how, how shall we go about um, positioning ourselves educationally in order to help people do this? Now, you are thinking possibly of, depending on the amount of time we have, of getting into the trees, which is an example of a response that we might have to preparing people to use random forest or something like that. But um, I think back to my PhD research days and Joan remembers these and uh, I was instructed by Mark St. John with my data to do principal components analysis, which I of course didn't fully understand, but I put in the numbers and I turned the crank and results came out and of course, we don't really understand what it means. Yeah. I don't know if, if you or others have a reaction to that or yeah. insight you could help us get. Yeah. I just want to clarify, Tim. So I've only used like a little bit of PCA myself. Um, what would you use it for in this data set? Like, I'm not sure I understand. Okay, so one of the things you might do is you say, oh, look at, <coughs> look at all these different columns we have. I bet uh, clearly some of the columns are related to others and they're related in sort of different amounts. And if we could make a 
20 or 15 dimensional plot of all of these things, we would see that there are different clusters of points. And those clusters of points might in fact represent different ideas that are encapsulated by different ones, different, different questions that are asked of the respondents. In this case, the respondents are countries, but because they're aggregated. But you might say, oh, well, there's one thing that's about social cohesion, and there's another thing that's about financial security or something like that. And you could assign different columns to be parts of different larger ideas. Yes, is that a fair representation? Anybody who knows what PCA is? Yeah. I, I think, I mean, that's exactly what social scientists would do here, yeah? They have their bag of high-powered, very fancy tools, and, um, and okay, and I, 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 and I, I worked with um, people in Tübingen for a while, uh, who are doing education research on a very high powered level, with very many different variables, highly skilled people. I, I learned quite a bit of statistics in talking to them. And, um, and I learned that there's also a lot of statistics I do not understand yet. Yeah? And, um, but, but a lot of things they did boil down to, um, because it's so complicated, we, we assume everything is uh, related linearly yes. and, um, and data are all distributed normally. And, and I thought, come on, I mean, what is the worth of all these conclusions you are trying to draw? And, and I don't want to invalidate them. They may really be useful, but um, um, I, I think in, or, a high number of people in statistics learned over the last 30 years of uh, the importance of exploring data. And you, you certainly may overlook something and you may be um, 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 torn in the, in the wrong direction because you, you are not really noticing something that is, yeah, that may have also some trouble, but but what we are doing here are exploratory methods. And I think they, at least they also have a value. And in pro-civic stat, we are not, uh, we are not about training um, the, uh, the, the best researchers in social science. We are, um, our concern is educating the public. And that means understanding multivariate phenomena. It's not doing multivariate analysis, not doing factor analysis and right. structural equation, equation modeling and, and, and multidimensional scaling and, and projection pursuit had also been 30 years ago a, a, a fancy topic where you say, let's make a projection of that 20 dimensional space to a three or four dimensional space to reduce something. But that's all, I mean, that also may be valid. And, um, but, but I don't believe that this is the only way to, to go about here. Okay. Question, did, uh, what tools did the students use to um, explore these data? You will be proud. Code up. <laughs> and uh, did, were there things that you learned about um, using Code up with students that are worth sharing? Yeah, I mean, um, like, let's see. But it, it may be a bit similar to what, what you just demonstrated. One thing I like doing is, um, let's say, um, here we have the happiness data yes, uh, last year, and now we want to have the impact of, of 
oh, not of countries, oh, sorry, of the continent. Ah, I screwed that, that up. And oh, the, I, I don't want to, to spend my time in, in demonstrating something, but I, I learned a bit more of um, subsetting and of representing the third variable. Uh huh. Like that. And, um, did they? How? I don't know how much uh, time they spent with Codap or with these data, for that matter. But did they have trouble getting started? Did they become uh, reasonably adept quickly, or how did okay. it go? Okay. I mean, yeah. You, you, you from the developer's perspective. And I can also have Achim answer that question. Um, no, they had no trouble at all, I would say. And I kept on asking them. Uh -huh. I mean, um, we have this semester, we have two groups of about 20 people. And we, um, our seminar sessions are, let's say, one third instruction fr from either one of us. And the remaining time is them, they doing something with code up or discussing some issues. Uh -huh. And did you use the German uh, translated version? No. <laughs> you, you worked hard and I, I, I'm grateful to you that you uh, provided the German version, but no. Uh -huh. Maybe not, maybe the students. But yeah, but when I, I watch them, no, no. I mean, most of the things are self-explanatory. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, <laughs> looking at the time and, uh, it, but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not my objective to push things through here. I'm, I'm grateful to you for sharing your ideas and for, for the discussion. And, um, and I can point out to you a few more things. And if you, um, if, if you thought it, it was interesting and you can, you can, you can do many things on your own also. Yeah? And if you have strong insights, and, um, and ideas, contact me, send me an email, um, um, <laughs> set up a chat conference with me. So, um, but let, let, let me go on and tell you a, a few more things that y you could do. Yeah? I prepared a second data set for you. And, um, and let's go here. And okay, here I got your nice comments. And I mean, some of you already know this data set. Bill and Tim know them. Um, we got hold of a fascinating data set containing records of 1,419 European soccer players. Ah, microdata. Microdata. Microdata in the agriculture. data um, list. I mean, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, sorry, these are not American football players. Um, they, it, when a player behaves poorly, yeah, makes fouls or insults other players, then he may get a red card, which is, means he's being sent off the pitch game is over and the record tells you how many red cards did these players get and what is as a very important covariate is what color of skin do they have we have a rating of the skin color of all of these players from very light light middle dark and very dark and in, in fact, I mean, I even have, uh, I can validate that assessment. I have the pictures of all these players and I know how they have been rated. N not by me. I, 
I, th that was a different research project, but they made their data all available. And, and of course, I mean, here you see even a link. I gave you a link to, to the original data set. And, um, and we, we don't have time to go through that in detail. But the, the, the question is, um, uh, th there may be relevant covariates here. Uh, these players are in playing in, in one of four um, European leagues in A England, France, Spain, and Germany. And the rules may be differently applied or in, in, in some countries they may be more physical than in other countries. And, um, and another important covariate is the position they play. Usually a defender is more likely to get a red card. And, and, um, than an attacker, uh, because the defender's job is to, to prevent someone of, of scoring a goal, and sometimes, um, um, not incidentally, but he may, I mean, kick against the leg and, uh, of someone who is ready to, to score a goal, and so on. Yeah? Um, okay, and we have data about height and weight, which may of relevance here. The small guys who are very quick with their legs, they um, 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 may, be, may tend to be the victim. They may be fouled by the, 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 um, uh, the player who is more slowly. So um, we don't have time to, to go into the details here. Um, but the, the issue here is, OK, also the validity of the data. Like uh, the validity of, of the skin tone and um, in the search for relevant covariates that may explain um, a possible relationship. And um, you, you have the link, and you can feel free to, to, do, some, to do some exploration. With time going on, let me rather. Um, uh, now, not, not have you um, um, investigate these data. Um, 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 yeah, I mean, <laughs> I asked you also for some comments. Rather, let me, me tell you what were the recurring statistical topics in our seminars. Comparing distributions. A hot topic, and Bill, we have micro data here, even 60,000 my income micro data. Um, why do women earn less than men? And you have to compare distributions, but not only the distribution of male and female employees, but, but there are also important covariates, age, educational level. Um, and, um, and the position they have in, in, in the company, and, and many more. And in, in Germany also, um, the, uh, the, the, the region, East Germany, former, former GDR, or West Germany. Um, okay, aggregating data, disaggregating data, investigating and comparing subgroups. The whole issue that we also had coming up, how were variables measured and how, how were they operationalized? Yeah? What do they contain? How do we dare to, um, to say this measure is related to, I mean, oftentimes what you measure is not, what, what you exactly can measure is not what, what you are really interested in. Yeah? In all of social science, um, many things, prejudice, for example, yeah, um, can, can you only have proxies? Data have to be restructured. Search for explanatory third variables, and so on. Inquiring about metadata, functional modeling, functional relationships. Yeah, okay. Um, um, model. I mean, is, 
the data are oftentimes nonlinear. Can, can you fit another curve to the data? Okay, these were the topics that, that came up um, very often. Um, okay. Achim, would you agree or did I miss anything? No. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, how, how are you doing, folks? Um, I have to make a decision now here um, how to go on. I don't want to talk too much, but um, the next part is a bit theoretical. I'll, I'll just put it in a nutshell. Um, we, I, we created a model that captures the knowledge base, the demands and challenges uh, for working with data about society. And um, we identified three course categories. The one we called um, engagement and action. The second one we called the knowledge or knowledge base. And the third one we called enabling processes. And just a few words about that. Yeah. Um, the, the start, the beginning at, and at the end point is what do these data really mean for, 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 um, for, for the community we live in? Why are they, how do they affect us? Yeah? Um, that's the whole purpose why we do that business. Yeah? We want to figure out, we are interested in the topic. Yeah? We want to know what makes the happiness, people happy. Yeah? Um, and this is the beginning and, and the end of of the whole investigation. Therefore, it's here the number one. And you, you need critical evaluation. And it, it has a lot to do with critical thinking. So Joachim, is that, are these characteristics of activities that you've done? Um, okay, we, we um, let, let me show you this slide here. You see a radar plot here and we evaluate our activities. We as instructors, but we also at times let our, our students evaluate. We give them an activity like investigate the happiness data. And now please reflect on um, how these 11 dimensions or facets were required here to, 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 to work on that. Yeah? Got it. Let's say, uh, what about the meaning for social policy? How, how important is that? You know, like the topic of racial bias in, in football, the topic of racism, gets a high rating on number one. Then in, in a lot of tasks, you have to apply critical thinking. Yeah. A lot of things that we discussed that are far beyond the um, formal technicalities that some people learn in, in a statistics class. Yeah? It, it's, it's not just um, um, plugging in numbers in something, yeah? but, um, but you, you, you have to, to, at the end, we, we ask them always, um, please, um, please tell us how, um, how certain you are about your conclusions. Be, be critical about what are the critical points and the questionable points in your, in, in, in your reasoning. <laughs> the third facet or dimension um, is it ha a lot of it has to do about this position. I mean, I have to be, be interested in the topic. Why, why do I even care? And I, I, I could be technically excellent in statistics and still uh, may, not, um, may, may not be willing to give data a, a high value in, in decision making. Yeah? You say, I, I, I still do what I feel like doing or what, um, what, what I would like the world to be. Yeah? Or I, I, do, I follow wishful thinking. Then the next um, four facets are more like the, the traditional 
or not only traditional, they are more the, the knowledge basis. Yeah, you have to know about statistics. You have to know about box plots and the median and the mean and, um, and the regression line. Yeah? You, you have to know about, that's number five, how, how to represent data, how to represent them visually, what aspects you represent. We, we all know that different representations highlight different aspects of it. Yeah? Representations have a lot to do with models. A sociologist may have a different model to explain poverty than an economist. Yeah? Number six, you, you have to know about the, the research methodology. How are data being collected? What is the difference between um, experimental data and observational data and survey data and, and many more of these things? Number seven, down in the corner, um, 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 you, you may need some knowledge about um, topics that relate to official statistics. Yeah. Unemployment rate. Yeah. It's, it's not easy or not trivial to define unemployment rate. And um, on an international level, uh, unemployment rates truly are, are not comparable. Right? You have a numerator and a denominator, and people put different things, different categories of people in the numerator and in the denominator. Earlier, we talked about the Gini coefficient, yeah? That's specific knowledge. Usually, that's not being taught in any introductory statistics class. No? Um, then here, we, you need context knowledge, civic knowledge. Of course, you have to relate your, um, your, your, your conclusions to a very complex situation. No? To understand migration, to understand crime and whatsoever. Okay, the next things here are not well. Um, um, ICT and search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, a lot of it has to do with with with, with, um, with um, um, uh, ICT te technology, you know? information and computing technology. How, how do you get data? Where do you how, how do you retrieve them? How do you get them into software? How do you handle the software? The whole issue of that connects the topic with, with data science. Yeah? And um, what else do we have up here? Oh, that's the quantitative core. We separated that. You, you have to know some basic math to know how to handle percentages, yeah? how to, to relate. Big no we, you have to, oftentimes you have to do with big numbers, but in relation, some big numbers may in fact be small numbers because yeah, they relate to <laughs> to even much bigger numbers. And the last one, and that's also not completely represented here anymore, it has a lot to do with literacy and communication. Literacy is not as trivial as it may sound. Um, if you study uh, and we, we hand it out in workshops and in our seminars, press releases from national statistics offices and they often are very difficult to understand. That's the literacy part and in the end, it's important that you can, can communicate your conclusion. Okay, we, we do some task analysis um, along the, uh, the, this um, model. Um, and um, yeah, here you, you see something and um, I would have asked you, um, when you still can do it, yeah? I mean, you, you have an, an automatic draft being generated in that document. Uh, you, you, could, you, you could do a task and then evaluate for yourself how, how much was I challenged to address this particular facet? No, no task um, um, requires or, or addresses all 11 facets at the same time. 
yeah, like the um, bias in, in football data, they have a zero in extension to official statistics. They have nothing to do with that. But to be a civic statistics task, it, it, it has to have a, a high value at least on, on some of these facets. Um, is that one person's response or an average or what? Um, we, we both, we, we asked for, for individual responses. Uh -huh. And yeah, here you see, that's what our, what's the Durham uh, HIFA team did with the racial, uh, is the racial bias in, in football data, yeah? You see, they gave a high mark, a relatively high mark on meaning for society and on dispositions and on yeah, critical reflections. And it got a rather, rather lower mark, I mean, a very low mark on official statistics. Okay, one can, one can also doubt some of their, I mean, it's, it's a, a, a an individual judgment um, um, if you give it uh, what kind of um, value you give it on representation patterns and models um, to to come to a conclusion you, you really have to I mean and to use code up you, you have to work a lot and you have to figure out how to um, to to a whole couple of co-variables under control. So that's why it, it, it's here a bit, I mean, what does it get? That is a value of four. Okay. Um, so that's kind of an, an assessment we, we did here. Yeah, 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 and looking at the time. Okay, the next thing is only- I, I have a question before you go on. Yeah. Um, so what was it like for you and Akim to teach these seminars? How was it, uh, what was your experience and how did it compare to other things that you've taught? Achim, would you like to respond to that? Come over here. Uh, well, the, the, the students don't have uh, much experience in, in, in analyzing data and they um, are not used to ask uh, from our opinion, good statistical questions. They, um, at the beginning and with the first uh, of our worksheets, they had, they had uh, much trouble to, to work with the data because they aren't used to it. They never learned it to, to work with, uh, with data and uh, especially not with uh, civic data. They, they sometimes, they want to reduce um, the data for for pupils because it, it would make make it easier for them and I tried to discuss with them why would they uh, delete the data and just use like five countries or ten countries instead of the whole 150 or so so um, well I make uh, the experience that it's good that we uh, teach all students in mathematics uh, mm -hmm. This uh, civic data analysis. So they have no choice. They have to come to us. Yes. <laughs> so imagine that uh, before the seminar, you ask them to describe their feeling toward data. I don't know what that means, but you get the idea. <laughs> then at the end of the seminar, you, you ask them again to describe their feeling towards data. Would you say that, it, what would you say would, you would observe? Well, I did uh, ask them with the SATS, for example. And um, I would say the, the students, they are really engaged. Um, they uh, are more comfortable with the data afterwards. And, but of course, there are some students, they like, oh, I don't care, it's data and then it's, civic data and I, I don't need it because I'm a math, a future math teacher. So, and, uh, well, I would say um, the majority is getting uh, more interesting in data and then they, they see how important it is to teach the, the, the pupils. Uh, but some of them are uh, 
Yeah, well, we don't um, reach them. Okay. Thank you. But but it, it's a very untraditional seminar that we have. Yeah? That they do group work as an assignment. They have to make a video. Yeah? And, um, and um, so even if they, <laughs> if they don't learn much about statistics, they learn about making videos. <laughs> and was your role different than normal as an instructor? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for, for the video, we ask them, we say, pick a topic that you are interested in. And go out and search for data. And some even find on the net data that they are interested in. And others, most of them come to us and say, oh, I really would like to study um, if, 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 if girls are really uh, uh, doing, doing uh, poorer in chemistry um, than, than, than boys. Yeah? in the PISA test, for example, yeah? But I don't find data. And in a number of cases, we, we, we could help and we say, here, we, we can find data for you. And in other cases, we say, well, no, um, <laughs> uh, we can offer you some other data. But, but what they, what quite a number of people always, in particular female students, what they want to study is, the relationship of the number of babies women have and the educational level. And what other variables are intermediate, what are others are confounders and things like that. Um, talking about data and looking at the time, um, I, I would like, I, I skipped that with the regression trees, yeah? I mean, if you feel like working with that, feel free, you can explore it. You have a link to, um, to a data set. And I'd like to tell you about resources that we provided, that we are in the process of, of finalizing in Procific Stat. And yeah, here you see a whole list of things, but what I would like to show you is our website and let me see if I get there. Yeah, this is our website. Okay, yeah, you get a lot of words and a lot of further links. And in particular, we have that link, we have something created that's called Civic Stat Map. Um, our colleague in Porto, Pedro Campos, from the University of Porto in Portugal programmed that with um, um, R Shiny, and you can access that. It's, it's not yet complete. Um, it, it will be completed within the next two months. And some of you may know Dahl Basel in Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. There's a, it's called the Data Set and Story Library that's already 25 years old, where you can pick a statistical method and, and a, a topic and it, it provides you with data for that. Okay, what we have here is you, you can have much more to choose from. Yeah? You can choose a tool. And um, inside or in, in some of our partners work in, in economics departments, and they do not work with um, CODAP. Only Paderborn and Ludwigsburg are working with CODAP uh, because we are the partners who train teachers. Um, and Porto works with Tableau. Some of you may know Insight, yeah? Then CODAP and Gapminder. Uh, um, Hungary works with Gapminder and some unorthodox tool. Uh, here from the New York Times. And so you could pick something here. Let's say I choose, I would like to have, oh, okay, I know what I did wrong. Let's have all the methods available, the statistical topics and the tool. And now you could even pick a particular social theme. 
climate and environment, for example. Yeah? Okay, ah. <laughs> there will be something coming up. We also develop materials that investigates fine dust and natural disasters. But let's, let, let's stay here to, to the football. What do you get here? You get here um, a lesson plan, TV, a teacher's version, and you get in, in English. And why do we have that twice here? Oh, it's, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it addresses different, different topics, and you have a student version of that, yeah? And let's say you could click on here, and you, you get, you get, a, you get teaching materials. That's nice. Okay, okay and let's go back. Where, where, where are we? Achim, help me. <laughs> um, here? No. Well, where are we? Here, yeah, no. No. <laughs> oh, I lost it. Okay. Here. No. I have to go back. Okay, I should never do that again uh, because um, I'm already, I mean, uh, in, in the, uh, sorry, you, you Americans may not be hooked too much to, to the TV to watch um, football these days because unfortunately your team didn't make it. <laughs> um, but uh, they have been playing a lot in overtime, and I'm playing in overtime here. Um, but there have been uh, quite a number of important goals being scored in overtime. Yeah. Um, before we end. Again, again, okay, you, you could figure out the pro that civic stat map, and you, you can find lots of materials, data sets, lesson plans and select it according to the tool you would like to apply. I mean, if you choose code up, you most likely will end up with materials that Achim and I developed. <laughs> if you choose insight, uh, probably Paderborn has it developed and with Tableau Porto has it developed. And you have some other um, filters where you can select things. It's not complete yet, but um, but it will be ready in at the latest in August. Okay, so sure. ah, we are now we are here again. But but um, yeah, five minutes overtime is still okay. I think. Um, so I thank you very much for your attention, for your patience. Thanks to Talia, Bill, and Tim for all the support. And um, you could go to either of these two links. They, they lead you. I mean, the uh, ISLP website is where we will be um, putting up our materials. Uh, that will be the final um, destination. And we hope it still will be there in a few years while that prosifixstat.org may disappear. In, in, in not too long ago, in not too long a time. Okay, okay, so I shut up now. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Joaquin. That was wonderful. We appreciate your time and those rich data sets that you had to share with us today. That was really wonderful. Um, just so everybody knows, if we did not get to your question or if you'd like to leave additional questions, Joaquin did generously leave his email open for us. You're also welcome to email us at um, dset at concord.org or also if you tweet to us with hashtag data site ed, we will respond. Uh, we had a lot of great interaction. I'm grateful to all of you for sharing your ideas and thinking today. We will send you a link to the recorded session shortly. Our next webinar is on July 18th with Lisa Hardy, who will be speaking about Internet of Things technology and data science in the biology classroom for the Inspect project. We, details will follow shortly and we'd love for you to join us. You can sign up for future webinars with us at concord.org forward slash meetup. You can also stay connected with us on Twitter at Kodap Data Sci. If you use the hashtag Data Sci Ed to tweet us any additional questions or resources, we will respond to you. Please also feel free to visit our website, codap.concord.org, to connect with us as well. 
Um, everybody, one more thank you to Joachim for joining us all the way from Germany. It's late there for you. We appreciate you being there. Um, to everybody else, we look forward to seeing you also on uh, July 18th. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. I clap for comments. <laughs> okay, and Will and Tim, I will see you in less than two weeks. Oh my goodness! True. <laughs> and Alan, we we don't know. I don't know who you are, but uh, I enjoyed your being here with us. Yeah, if you if you want to tell us who you are, we'd love to know. But if you're going to do that, you have to unmute yourself. <laughs>